I've seen so many mistakes when it comes to lighting a scene in Unreal using Lumen. This real-time and dynamic technology is quite known by a lot now, but often misused or misunderstood. Let me clarify that for you. Lumen has been introduced to us when Unreal Engine 5 was released almost three years ago. It changed the whole lighting workflow because we don't need to bake lighting and to struggle with light map and light mass anymore. It replaces screen-based global illumination, distant field ambient occlusion, and screen space reflections. Global illumination and reflections are now managed by default with Lumen. And if you create any new projects, you won't need to activate lots of things because Epic facilitates the process for us. If you go to Project Settings under Rendering, after creating a new project from templates, you'll see that Lumen is the dynamic global illumination method as well as the reflections method. And if we go further down here, I have extra things to explain to you guys. First, remember that in the project settings we are currently now is where everything starts before putting any lights in our scene. Lumen can use both software and hardware ray tracing. It will first and by default use software ray tracing through mesh distance fields. It will have the best compromise for quality and performance, allowing you great amount of overlapped mesh, for example. You can increase the distant field of voxel density to get best results and avoid any light issue with thin surfaces mesh. And you can also do this operation on specific mesh only by editing distance field resolution scale from the static mesh editor bulk setting. But be gentle because it will increase the disk size of your project. Lumen will generate a nearby synth surface called surface cache with 12 cards by default on each mesh in your scene. This is what Lumen will use to evaluate lighting at ray hit and it kind of simplifies your mesh and captures the material properties from various angles, which is called cards. This process works better and faster with nanites, especially when you have high poly meshes. And any foliage or instanced static mesh components can only be supported if they are using nanites. Don't forget that. You can visualize these cards by using this console command. You can also see things by activating surface cache mode under lumen visualizations. Pink areas mean no surface cache and no bounce light. So it will appear black in reflections. It also means that Lumen will stop at the first step of its process, which is screen traces. So you can get a real effect of lighting disappearing based on distance or in a screen space effect. Of course, you absolutely need to fix this. You have several solutions. For example, you can increase the number of cards using max lumen cache in the static mesh editor bold settings again, or in many scenarios, you will need to break up your complex shape geometry into different pieces. For example, with an interior, you need to separate walls, floor, ceiling, etc. And lumen will thank you, trust me. It can also be coming from some material setup that are not really compatible with Lumen. To make it simple, remember the three holy elements here. Lumen with software retracing, which is the default method, Nanite to enhance the whole process, and virtual shadow maps, which is the default shadowing mapping method. This is what you need to experience the full global dynamic illumination with Lumen in a software retracing method. And this is what you get by default, except with nanites, which you have to enable it on mesh one by one. And with that, you will have all the expected results. Then, you will have the possibility to use hardware ray tracing to get the highest quality, mainly for mirror reflections and translucency material. It also supports a large range of geometry types because it is tracing against triangles and evaluates lighting at the ray hit instead of the lower quality surface cache, meaning that it can support tracing against skin match too. And that's a real plus. It requires, of course, supported video cards and it will also heavily impact performance. If you want a peace of mind, you can set up your project settings as I do here. By doing so, you could choose afterwards 
whether you want software or hardware retracing. You'll be able to control these options and furthermore, directly by lights or via your post-process volume. Oh, and as we are using dynamic global illumination, we won't need static lighting anymore. Lumen will be activating things automatically, but it's always a plus to manually disable allow static lighting in the project settings. It will create space in the G-buffer and also supports for material ambient occlusion, which provides reliable self-occlusion on skeletal meshes. We could cover lots of more techie aspects, but with that, you'll have a little in-depth overview, which is largely enough to understand better and moving forward. So let's jump into this new scene and explain a bit further. It is an interior scene, and remember that it is the most complicated and cost performance for ray tracing. Open area like exterior environments is a bit easier and faster to process. Once everything is set up in your project settings, as I said, you will control your lumen settings directly via your post-process volume and your lights. Make sure to disable auto exposure in your post-process volume by fixing EVs like I do here. Or you can disable it directly in your project settings. Now you just have to drag and drop any type of lights in your scene and set up your global lighting as you wish. Remember to always put your lights in a dynamic mobility mode. When you've played some lights, you can now toggle lumen view mode to see what's going on here. The key here is to make sure that your lumen scene is matching with your lit scene. If there is any black mesh, it means that lumen won't process correctly and it will process with screen tracing only. You can see better the issues here by using surface cache mode. As I mentioned earlier, pink areas mean no surface cache, so no light bounce. And you can visualize the cards created by Lumen for your meshes by using the console command I told you about. This one. Make sure to verify your Lumen settings in your post-process volume, mainly the Lumen details one. You'll need sometimes to increase this value to get more meshes processed by Lumen mainly when they are a little bit far away in terms of distance. If you have yellow meshes in the surface cache mode, it means that it will use culling. So depending on how you are placed with your camera and your scene, you will see the mesh pop afterwards. And this will need to be fixed because it can create some lights appearing at any moment when you are traveling around your scene. And you can fix that by using the little solution I mentioned earlier via mesh distance field, via voxel resolution, sometimes by baking your mesh in terms of scale and rotation, it can fix it. And most of the time, it's depending on the material it uses. You can get the highest quality by enabling heat lighting for reflections and high quality translucency reflections in your post-process volume here. Mainly if you have any reflective or mirror materials. The key here is to be able to fly around your scene without any lighting pop-up or adjustment, which will make you feel of a screen space illumination. Here we are using Lumen, the dynamic global illumination system of Unreal. So don't forget it. So folks, this is kind of a global overview of Lumen to make it clear. And I hope this will help you because I know that it's not an easy task to understand all these kind of black magic happening all around the scene, mainly with interior scene, as I mentioned. So let me know what you think in the comments. Don't hesitate if you have any question and I will try to make from scratch a lead scene for you guys in the next video coming for you. Thanks and see you on next Thursday.